Hello everyone, my name is Kanika. I am a special educator by profession. I am very passionate about working with special needs children and I started Minds That Matter to spread awareness about special education. Um, so uh, we are going to talk about a lot of different disabilities like ADHD, learning disabilities, Down syndrome, Asperger's syndrome, autism etc. Uh, here you will get to learn about a lot of uh, strategies in in how to deal about uh, deal with the children or adults with special needs and get to know of the professionals that you can connect with in case you are a parent or a teacher who deals with special needs children or adults on a daily basis today we have a speaker talking about the nuances of special education she will be telling us all about what special education means, what it entails and how we can understand it better. So I'll just introduce her in a few minutes. We'll start at exactly 11 o'clock. So, um, in uh, this session will be very useful for you in case you are a student who is wanting to become a professional in the field of special education or you are a teacher who teaches children in the school or taking online classes these days or a parent. So you will be get, getting understanding of what all you can do to help these children or adults. I am just waiting for the speaker to come online. We'll just start in another minute. Hello everyone, thank you for your patience. We're just going to start in a minute. Okay everyone, uh, I'll just introduce our speaker. Our speaker for today is Mrs. Gitika Kapoor. She has been working as a school psychologist, special educator, behavior analyst, as well as a content analyst for academic curriculums for over 20 years. She provides educational and psychological therapy to children in both school as well as clinical setups. She actively consults with schools for setting up evidence-based practices. Today, she is here to help us know and understand all about special education. So welcome Mrs. Gitika. Thank you for being over here and sharing all your knowledge and experience with us. I'm happy to be here. And I look forward to an uh, exciting conversation with you all. Let's jump in. Okay. So uh, let's start with what is special education? Okay. So um, the category that we are trying to serve, and I hate using the word category, but this is a group of students who have special needs. Uh, we uh, use uh, the term is children with special needs. 
uh, which have different disability diagnoses. And in uh, India, we have now come to recognize 21 conditions as, uh, you know, covered as disabilities that we recognize now. And special education teachers are trained to serve this group of children who are either entering the mainstream or who are, uh, you know, in special ed centers or other service providing centers in the community. So special education is about teaching and we'll talk about teaching in a bit, but it's about teaching this group of children uh, because it is very well established that this group brings very different needs over them. And it needs a highly specialized trained person to understand what those needs are and to create programs which cater to those needs rather than expecting the children with special needs to fit the regular education uh, system right. and, uh, you know, adapt to a regular classroom. So the expectations have to be more uh, kind of balanced. That's where a special education teacher would step in as an advocate ah. for that child. Right. As an uh, informed person for uh, saying what is it that this child needs specifically? What are the various barriers that could be uh, kind of impeding this child's ability to learn? And right. that's when I think a special education teacher brings in so much of power to a child who otherwise would be helpless. Uh, children we know are not very at, uh, you know advanced with their language. They cannot articulate mm -hmm. what uh, you know their needs are. So they are vulnerable, right. and that's right. where a special education teacher will give that voice and say this child needs this from the system, and that's where the role of a special education teacher is uh, continuously creating that space. Within the school systems, the regular school systems that they are part of, where we are making sure that the administration, the teachers understand first mm -hmm. what the condition, the disability is all about. Right. What are the natural barriers that will come this child's way and mm -hmm. to reach any level of learning? You know, all children will should be learning something. Right. They are in their growing prime years when they come to us. Yes. So a special education teacher will make sure that any student who's entering the system is growing. So that's how we would be creating balance between what are those barriers and then what are the skills that the student can learn. Right, right. That's also very different, no, for a special education teacher. In general education, what happens is uh, all children learn the same curriculum. Right, right. And all children have to come up to the level of the curriculum. Yeah, the we curriculum expect, uh, doesn't shift. Needs, children are the ones who come up to the level of the regular children instead of thinking in the way that, you know, we are the ones who can give them that support, that intervention. And we need to create the inclusion so that they are a part of the society. Instead, what happens is we end up expecting that they come up to our level. I, I think that is the biggest barrier that Thank exists. Um, I would look at it like this, that this is how general education systems yes. are programmed. Right. It's like, it's in the air, you know, it's that big elephant in the room. That it's school, always been like that. It's always been like that. And I think it's world over like that, that every grade in the school has certain set parameters, certain set syllabi or curriculum goals that they expect their students to master. And uh, there is also a kind of a spectrum only. You know, there is that uh, area where the teacher will maneuver only within that space. 
the right. teacher is not uh, expected they are not trained they are not uh, you know kind of given that flexibility to expand that horizon and say can i really stretch myself that much and that's right. also to say the kind of responsibilities that general education teachers um you know are given in a regular education setting is also one of the road blocks where right. that stretching of the horizons or the boundaries of their work is not so much practical for them whereas when we say a special education teacher is coming in with a special purpose mm -hmm. that they will actually focus on a group which is in a school a very small group in numbers yes it's not you know a number of a thousand or a two thousand <laughs> students that yeah. we are serving we end up serving very closely about 10 to 15 learners and yeah. then programming very broadly for say at most 50 students in a school if we are doing anything more than that i mean we need to be super humans to <laughs> serving children so this is also kind of the role of a special education teacher versus a regular education teachers that we were trained for very different roles and in schools what we need to do is collaborate in terms of what uh, you know a regular uh, education teacher is trained for or a special right. education teacher is trained for and we learn from each other right, so that's right. like the story ahead we'll talk <laughs> about it okay so there's a question from the audience you mentioned that there are 21 disabilities or conditions if you could mention what some of them are and are special needs educators trained for specific challenges or can they help in every single one of these oh my god that is like mother of all questions there so i mean we know that uh, terrible some of the motor disabilities cerebral palsy or mental disabilities like uh, intellectual disability or autism uh, learning disability these are included what i would encourage the audience here is to google google is our friend these days so just google uh, what are the Uh, accepted 21 categories of disability in indian legal systems and you will easily get access to the uh, those listing the second part of your question which is i think paramount is is a special educator trained to serve all children all categories all groups of disabilities so one i would say that there are two sets of programs two kinds of programs that are pre prevailing in india right now one is a uh, special education training programs uh, that are doing multiple disability training then the other set of uh, programs that are doing specific disability so a program in only intellectual disability right. a program in uh, say uh, deaf and uh, mute children a uh, program in uh, say uh, sorry hearing impairment is what i should have said or visual impairment so now these are the two kinds of trainings that are prevailing mm -hmm. at the having said that uh we as service providers for special needs children have not yet shown our caliber as a field Right. we yet have not shown what potential the field has mm -hmm. and that is where a lot of times when work is given to us work is given in a very generalized space our employer do not tell me what these differences are okay. our uh, clients who come to us outside school settings or even in school settings the parents who approach us or the teachers who refer to special education groups uh, and i think a lot of times in schools what happens is that there is going to be a referral point of a counselor in the school who would do the screening and sorting of which students need mental health services versus which need special education services and that's when also for a school counselor who's um 
you know behaving like is in that role of a gatekeeper of sorts of where the referrals go uh, they do not have so much of choice of many special education teachers in the right. school system or teachers uh, that we are serving uh in that sense i think oh there is an action happening if you could just wait for 10 seconds and then uh, continue okay yeah <laughs> you can see how i was i just like to say ha i just like to point out that uh, when i said 10 seconds that can still be a little abstract for many people with special needs so you made it visual by actually counting till 10 on your fingers this is one of the things that we do for our uh, uh, struggling students so uh, i also need to say this here kanika that uh, unfortunately right now when we talk of special needs population in india we are uh, referring to students who are severely affected by their disabilities the milder forms and in fact that's where i say the you know whenever we have a diagnosis of mild learning disability mild autism mild anything it's um, kind of said okay it's not that serious right right so we need to understand that a uh, milder the condition uh, more delayed the diagnosis or identification of that child is and that's where one of the tragedies right now in mainstream is that a lot of our children go unidentified uh till i think they reach middle school Right. and that also because these students have so many strengths with them that their deficits are hidden hidden right and until these deficits show up in exaggerated forms in middle and high school we do not give them services so because that's one of the expectations from the curriculum uh, become so uh, high that it's difficult for the child to perform and that's when we realize that there is a gap so ma'am since you're talking about the diagnosis i would like to ask how is it that we identify that a child is struggling and might have special needs okay so one uh, the first level of identification is the teacher the classroom teacher where uh, they tell us they uh, kind of are able to see that there is something that this student is not able to meet the academic social uh emotional <laughs> of what the grade level is i stress it yeah <laughs> this happens with technology <laughs> oh this happens in life <laughs> see you have to wait 10 seconds and i tried my luck by doing only 5 seconds <laughs> and it told me listen behave yourself you are told 10 <laughs> seconds follow the limit yes. okay <laughs> all right so uh when we are talking about identification so diagnosis is a big word i would leave it till the end uh, because diagnosis also means that we are putting a final stamp of what this child is all about or what what this person is all about and it translates mostly into labeling the child which is not the idea behind diagnosis yeah so again i think uh, looking at the imbalance of number of children who need services and the number of professionals available for that provision is such a disproportionate uh, you know kind of a status in our society right now that um, 
labeling or diagnosis is one way of screening out a group in saying that okay at least this much is not general ed's responsibility Right, right. This much is, you know, we are off that limit now. Let's concentrate on what we can do, and this is actually a very pragmatic reality of all societies, not just here in India yes. right now. All societies mm. work like that. That as organizations, as larger systems, we are trying to see what is it the best we can offer. How do we problem solve uh, the whole situation best? And that's how we start segregating and. making so many systems in the school so now one the classroom teacher is going to be our first uh, identifier and when i said not just academic if we are having very um, regular conversations trainings for our children it's the social and emotional needs that actually give us you know when preschoolers or nursery or kindergarten children uh cry a lot before they come to school and uh, crying persists more than a week or more than a month or crying keeps coming back after you know every holiday uh, that they come back to. now that is our window that okay this child has some emotional needs that are different there is a <laughs> so there is uh you know some anxiety uh, some insecurity that this child is facing and now when a nursery and a kindergarten and a grade 1 and a grade 2 teacher are working in tandem mm-hmm. this child is already been identified as emotionally sensitive right and it's not only once a disaster happens so you know when we go back in school history then the kindergarten teacher is able to tell us oh i also saw something like this in this child but the disaster is coming to light in grade 7 mm-hmm. and now for me if i meet a student in grade 7 as say showing me obsessive compulsive disorder as showing me uh, you know school refusal as showing me low academic achievement or as showing asperger's disorder so now the identity or manifestation i think the gland is not able to handle <laughs> it's too heavy very <laughs> good okay uh um, the manifestation so a lot of times what is manifested in grade 7 as a disorder has its shades coming in lower grades and for me to say did we not see this coming could we have seen this? again prevention i don't know if i can do something different um right now um so when we say prevention i am not saying that we could have prevented or cured a disability in a student but we can definitely prevent the uh, you know kind of dysfunctional manifestation of that disability so in this light i would want to point out aspergers as a disorder which is our high high functioning group of students in schools who have very subtle social deficits very much communication breakdowns these kind of limitations actually come to light in schools 
I hate Instagram on that. <laughs> Too much echo. <laughs> Too much echo. Okay, I think it's hinting me to modulate my voice better. Um, so they have such subtle deficits that it's not until the pure group starts, you know, the joke or the interaction. So after the language. When they start experimenting with some clown and their behavior, that changes. But now we have to. That I don't. Deepika, ma'am, can we try to connect you again? Like you, I, I could disconnect you and then connect you again, so that in case it's because of that, we would we might get better connection. Stay online. I'll just reconnect you. Sure. Thank you for being patient, everyone. We're just having a few network issues. Gitika, ma'am is connecting back. Oh uh, yes, I really hope it's better this time. Let's try. Okay, so where was I? You're talking about Asperger's syndrome. So children, they have. Uh, so identification and i'm uh, see how i'm stretching identification at the teachers level also i think if the school support teams student support teams which generally have counselors special education teachers in schools if they are visiting the regular ed classes regularly to pick up these subtle because we know that teachers and counselors are trained right. to pick up certain uh, you know subtle nuances in the behavior so we are able to pick and also intervene early you know if uh, the hand signal that i just use is that i think comes to intuitive meaning to us in strange that we don't stop and think right so now this is one of the ways where we collaborate and we identify first children with <laughs> Subtle, 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 and we let me take a break. Yeah, <laughs> I also missed out on hearing a few words. They're static. Hmm. Thank you. Yes, our audience is helping us. They're saying static. Okay. Can we do anything to prevent it? please write your suggestions um so you right. were emphasizing the need for uh, all these professionals to collaborate uh, counselors special educators as well as the general education teachers if they collaborate then they are able to identify struggling students much earlier okay it says it's perfect now and intervene so identification has a purpose of intervention we need to also kind of uh, create that role in the regular ed system where we are working towards prevention as much as we are working with students who are identified as disability having a disability so a lot of time where i think i see special ed teachers becoming only on identified subjects and not too much on uh providing intervention not so much on prevention and this is where uh, i think we do a disservice because 
for the larger society and to realize our potential, we need to be also working on prevent and getting that prevent. And that is when we start seeing that special education. Uh, while we waiting, there's this uh, question from the audience that uh, many times general teachers have to, um, you know, be able to identify that this child might be struggling. So they don't have the right kind of knowledge to be able to do that. Who is responsible for training them? And you know, given the time of Google, too many people have started becoming Google doctors. They read one thing and they think that if a child is writing B as D, that means that the child has dyslexia. So what can we do about that? So now, see, understand, because our systems are so geared towards identifying and getting rid. Identifying and, you know, sending the child away. We want, and I think that's where the behavioral sciences have taught us, learning is this. Whatever, uh, you know, least effort, the... Whatever is the least effort? I'm giving it 10 seconds. That every is geared to all the solutions that we can do. And human beings do that. That's natural. The more we start working towards prevention, is when we start healing the identifications right because if we are working with the teacher and saying okay yes we see reversals here which is one of the red flags of dyslexia and we do it so it is real now let's oh uh, getting among the uh, echo is increasing uh can you uh, close exit Instagram and then come again live uh, live on Instagram. Let's do that. Okay. Sorry, everyone. We're having uh, static and echo problems. So Gitika ma'am will just rejoin again in a few seconds, so that the network is a little better and you can hear her. Just give us 10-15 seconds. Until then, I'm going through the questions. General teachers are not having right knowledge. Also, most of the time, not the right attitude to cater to diverse needs. That's true. They require training to be able to work with children with disabilities. So, Gitika ma'am is back. She's just joining in. And she'll address your questions. Yes. Okay. Welcome back. Thank you. So yes, I hope it works this time. So now, um, this is the difference. If our efforts start moving towards prevention, we start speaking on these red flags because I think I am really proud of a teacher who picks this up. That I am seeing reversals and I want more and more teachers to become alert to these. Or if I have, say, a phonologically disordered student who's not speaking clearly, I want my teachers to raise alarm there. And now is let's start working. Right. And we knew that the moment we put interventions in place early on, more likely the student is to uh, respond. And we remediate. So one, I would say, if regular ed teachers are referring, we need to encourage that at all costs. 
and we need to have time in our day to visit that teacher and say let's talk more about what you're seeing use your knowledge as a special education teacher on what interventions are possible let's put some interventions in place who is going to work with this student let's identify that personnel get after that student in a way that they are in i seriously do not know what's wrong today yeah <laughs> i've not had this much problem with static in any other sessions so far I've never had this <laughs> so i do not i'm even new to this so i do not know what's happening um so yeah i think this is where we say that uh, how we respond to the reference mm -hmm. is also going to decide what our systems do with those reference how do they go about identifying now the idea is understand principle of effort mm -hmm. the effort and you take away the what are you teaching ma'am could you please repeat i uh, lost out on a few words so i'm saying if my general ed colleagues refer mm -hmm. and i take away that child to my room do something in my room but nobody knows what i did so there is also something that you fixing something right you do and the, the principle of least effort says good call kanika more because that's at least one child less or one you know issue less and for right. a teacher it is so empowering let's see i ensured that my children are not neglected i ensured that early identification happened early intervention happened so this is how unknowingly we could be encouraged right uh you know false alarm right right and i think and i can guarantee you this that if we really work in a collaborative manner where we go back to the teacher we take time to understand what's happening we work with the teacher to give interventions to the student we work with the teacher who are these people in small group interaction mm -hmm. do we train our general ed groups to give small group interventions to our students what are the best evidence based that we know that you can or go again uh continue so how we bypass all uh, you know letters and we know what sequence the letters should be followed in or how to program phonological awareness into the program in saying how do we see better you know sound letter recognitions coming in place now there is enough evidence as special education i need to give this to the i need to give and this is team work thank you <laughs> this is cheating <laughs> I'm just cheating. We did it. <laughs> We did ten seconds. Then. I'm observing you and learning from you, and then applying it. <laughs> <laughs> That is so cute of you. Okay, so I think this is where I cannot, uh, you know, emphasize more that general ed teachers will pick up skills, and we pick up. How I think I've seen 
world over that general year is programmed in blocks mm mm-hmm. okay they go from one block of teaching to the next block to the next block and each block has certain defined targets that they should be teaching they do not have the flexibility of going back to block 1 when the rest of the class is on block 10 right 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 and this is where uh, if you see a general ed teacher teaching in the classroom i mean how wonderfully they flow within a block also how they balance children in the classroom is a skill for a special ed teacher to learn from a general ed teacher okay and when a special uh, when a general ed teacher sees a special ed teacher doing you know all sorts of modifications to one lesson that they did not see is possible that's when we are teaching differentiation right. to the general ed teachers so now this is that both teachers also both sets of teachers also need to be seeing each other in action that's where whenever i am supervising you know school uh, student support services i'm saying are you going to the mainstream classroom if you want to be in your room and the mainstream services in the school you wasting your field why do i say that because there's so much that special education field can offer but that's also we get out of our comfort zone right right we need to start talking more we need to start visiting classrooms more we need to start opening ourselves to new learning mm mm-hmm. in saying that in fact i think that's one of the trends that scares me in all these south asian communities is that once we get our degrees we stop learning right i mean once we have you know everything there is to know and uh, now there is no more left and that's scary right. because i mean i did my training in what it's been 20 years the field has advanced so much in 20 years in fact what literature is coming out right now is amazing it's so empowering so how can i stop yes it is effort but more and more we are learning we are investing and in fact that's time investing time investing money in that learning more empowered we feel and so it's important for us to keep ourselves uh, keep upgrading our uh, knowledge keep keep being mm-hmm. actively involved with professional development so that we keep developing more knowledge better skills and then we would be in a better way able to help the students i go with that completely so ma'am uh, there are uh, a lot of different kinds of challenges that children have mm-hmm. one child might need intervention for reading another might need for writing a third one might need for uh, motor activities like walking running jogging so how do parents try to you know how do the parents understand which professional to go to and who gives therapy for what okay so for parents now uh parents once you discover that your child has some special needs uh and i think all parents do that but i will say that very strongly parents need to start educating themselves mm-hmm. uh i think there is no other way uh if a parent i think longer a parent is confused about what the diagnosis is what the core deficits are going to be what are going to be strengths that i can uh, you know strengthen in my child uh, so it's kind of you know a journey with a special needs child which is very different from a so called neurotypical or a regular child is that a regular child responding to diagnosis uh, that child is responding to if you ask me even sometimes no conscious parenting so anyway a child with special needs has so little skills 
of learning that a parent needs to be able to recognize what is that narrow window of teaching right and that's where parent training becomes equally important mm-hmm. and as we know personality differences in all human beings <laughs> some parents are more outgoing they are more you know proactive in seeking that information some parents are you know more like they want to follow they follow the advice very diligently whatever professional decision they would do it they would not question much because again you know, like generally a lot of us have focus on the children hospital we are equated to doctor ha right uh also uh teachers i think whatever all said and done even the modern day time there is still a sizable population in among parents who still looks up to teachers uh you know who still regards teachers as you know more knowledgeable people so in that sense i think parents look up to all the professionals for guidance that we know better and they will guide us so i think one to a parent i would say please ask a lot of questions mm-hmm. about what is it that the professional is doing why they are doing what they are doing what is it that they expect is going to change or improve in the child as a result of this work okay so more and more parents understand what this professional is doing mm-hmm. generally i think when you started asking about diagnosis uh the fine diagnosis will be done by a, a variety of individuals so it could be a neurologist it could be a psychiatrist it could okay. be a pediatrician it could uh-huh. be a clinical psychologist it could be a developmental psychologist who's making this diagnosis uh so one whenever they receive that diagnosis mm-hmm. they need to understand from that doctor i'm using doctor but a professional that makes a diagnosis take time from ask them questions mm-hmm. if the doctor making the diagnosis is too busy can not give you the time ask for a reference that you can speak to okay again at this point i do not treat google as a uh, as an enemy i would want parents to look up at the google okay i encourage the families i work with read up ask me questions mm mm-hmm. because until and unless they are asking questions they will not clarify their own understanding and we need answers i mean uh, we, we know parents as parents we just to bhar bhi jata hai hum log kitne pareshan ho jate hain bacche ko leke hum dast tarah ki dawaiyan dene ki koshish karte hain hum doctor ke paas leke jate hain so here for time the suffering so much why would a parent information why would a parent not ask us questions we should be asking so uh, i think a very long answer i think there are two reasons uh, why parents uh, do not ask questions one they don't know what to ask and the other is uh, given the indian context there's a lot of taboo when it comes to special needs सो देखो टैबू की बात तो मुझे ऐसे लगती है कि हम तुम और मैं हमें काम करना है अपने फील्ड का पोटेंशियल दिखाने में राइट यू नो व्हेन आई से व्हाई इज यू नो गोइंग फॉर अ थायराइड 
testing not a tab बिकॉज वी नो थारो टेस्टिंग होगी वो डिग्री बताएंगे उनके पास सही सोल्यूशन है इलाज हो जाएगा काम खत्म बट जैसे जैसे हमें ये पता चलता है वेल साइकोलॉजी वाले लोग कुछ खास करते नहीं है वंस बच्चा स्पेशल एजुकेशन में जाता है वो स्पेशल एजुकेशन का ही होके रह जाता है हाउ डिस हार्डनिंग दैट इज Why would a parent want a child to enter special ed in the first? I have a lot of parents asking this question when we suggest that your child requires a special needs service. They ask, "Ma'am, how long is it for? Three months, three years? How long?" And some of them say that you know, my friend, he put his child in this program, and he's been in this program ever since. so you know this is like a program where you just keep getting us on board and our child never leaves and the child becomes dependent on it and that is a very telling point uh, i would say kanika because that is a reality mm. uh we need to also know that as professionals we need to give evidence based services to our learners now for me i specialize in dyslexia and i know that children can learn to read but they need programming they need systematic intervention my worry becomes when a student enters education in school and instead of waiting for a few seconds because there is static okay so instead of remediation or skill development student gets only accommodations right when a student cannot write we compensate that need by giving a scribe if they cannot read uh, the questions we read it out for them we overlook their spelling mistakes you know all these are accommodations these are not interventions you are doing nothing to enhance their skills in reading so now for my parent who's worried about the development is my child always going to be print blind the answer is yes because there are no services being provided for the student to mm-hmm. there is no plan towards independence from all the services that we need so this is when we say that can special education do better i would say yes we need to do Definitely. better i think And we need to train our special educators better so that yeah. uh, the, they have the skills necessary to be able to give that intervention so one give that intervention second show to the authorities who are employing us that we can make some differences mm-hmm. and that also where i think that the milder the earlier classes is when where we need to focus a lot more because when more and more learners have more skills and year after year you are able to show the number of referrals happening in class 6 7 8 declining right now this journey for a special education team or a counseling team the student support services in a school is the journey that will take say about 7 8 9 10 years mm-hmm. so a student that you served in nursery or kindergarten when they reach middle school so that's a whole batch of students right? Right, right so that when you will start seeing the ripple effect of your interventions but if you stick to, if you stick to early intervention where your your intervention program are part of the school system mm-hmm. that's the time when we start seeing confidence in the community in our service right 
Right, right. And then we are also able to see we need more special education teachers in the school. We need more counselors in the school. Because now the school now so these guys are good. They are useful. Let's right. get more. Let's get more. And that's I think where we have reached now in this 2020 that we need to create a bulk that we are used to the people. So I think uh, to sum it up, it's uh, very important that we identify children early and give them the early intervention that they require, so that they also have a chance to succeed in school. all the professionals need to work collaboratively so ma'am when we talk about uh, professionals collaborating what about the professionals collaborating with the parents is that important how will that help okay so uh, question i think i treat parents as part of the team and parents need to know everything that the team is doing Uh, the problem that i think happening is when parents are just informed this is the ic right what we are doing these are the services we are providing and this is i think collaboration is a skill set that we learn we learn it's uh, actually communication skills that we need to deliberately learn in saying what we are and sure collaboration and collaboration skills is supposed to be learned with special education and counseling it's also to be trained in skills occupational therapy speech and language pathology this is how a team comes in play so if i have a professional with communication deficit who do not uh, give good give signals good signal. um, uh, that i want to i am understanding, understanding. so now these are several deficits so once we become aware we train members in collaboration we also train them when you do this this and this the other person shuts down Right, people are not right. feeling comfortable of talking to you so that's we train or very behavioral you be trained because moment you say this one is like this only or this parent is a difficult to ha that happens we a lot we assume that nothing can happen whereas if you take a trainer point of view you say let me see what the barriers are let me see what difficulties i see let me see how i can facilitate that learning i think that's bad okay okay so it's uh, it's time uh, thank you gitika ma'am for coming here taking out your precious time and enlightening us about uh, different aspects of special education i think you've broken it down into very simple language for the audience In fact, we have people sharing that, uh, barring the sound issue, this has been one of the best sessions so far. So I'm oh, really very thankful to Gitika Ma'am for being thank here and sharing all of this information with us. Thank you, Karika. It was delightful for me to talk to you, and thank you all for your patience with my voice breaking and everything. I wish all of you very good. Let's take the field forward. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you, everyone, for being here. I will be uh, sharing the concluding points from Miss Gitika's session by the end of the day. So, in case you missed her session, you can refer to the video that would be uploaded or to the poster that will have the concluding points. In case you have any other questions. please do connect and we would be happy to answer them thank you so much bye 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 bye